Uh, that's a really easy one to answer. My first season at Celtic and the title race was really tight and it came down to our last game of the season which was Rangers at Celtic Park. I think Rangers still had two games to play but this was our last league game of the season so it was winner takes all and Alec McDonald scored for Rangers, goal down and then we had John Doyle sent off uh, who was one of our big players and it, it looked really bleak for us but uh, somehow with the 10 men we went 2-1 ahead, Bobby Russell equalised 2-2 with about 10 minutes to go and, and we scored two in the last 10 minutes so I don't think, I mean I, I don't know how many I played in 20 odd, maybe, maybe 30 odd old firm games that, that was never going to be beaten that just the circumstances to win the title beating Rangers with 10 men that was as good as it gets I'm going to beat that <laughs> <laughs> no it's got to be the Scottish Cup final um, Davey actually commentated on it um, I've got to be honest with you two fantastic teams Celtic had a, a great team we had a, a great team fully top players um, and it was 3-2 Obviously, it was uh, it, it was back and forth, non-stop. Five minutes Celtic were dominating, five minutes we were dominating. Um, and thankfully, um, we scored the last kick of the ball, Peter Lovenkranz, and also, I noticed a free kick. I, I think it would probably be the same game, uh, bizarrely enough, and just to take part in that game. Um, I, I've, obviously, I've seen some fabulous old firm games. The one that does stick out, in modern times was the 6-2 game at Celtic Park. I think it, it might have been Martin O'Neill's first Old Firm game. <laughs> He's not happy with us at all. But, you know, just as the circumstances, Martin O'Neill's first Old Firm game, Rangers the dominant team at that time. So for Celtic to win as convincingly as they did, and it was, I think it was an indication that the balance of power was going to shift that season. And I, I think Celtic won the treble, but... But that game, I'll always remember that game. I was commentating on that game for Sky and I was rubbing my eyes at times. I could hardly believe how it was unfolding. It was a, a remarkable game. Bye. That game he's talking about, I was rubbing my eyes in a different <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, similar to what David just mentioned, it's got to be the same game that I, I said, uh, first of all, it was the Scottish Cup final. As I said, two teams that um, I thought were, were top class teams and as I said, in both sets, certainly the, the Celtic team, a lot of players that I respected and thought were top players and similar with the guys that I played with um, at Rangers, for me, were, were top players. So probably that's the best game I've played in. The best thing about it is the feeling after the game if you've won the game. There's, there's nothing that beats the feeling of having won the game. Um, I've, I've got to be honest, I can't honestly say I enjoyed too many of them. There's just so much tension, so, mu so much importance. You're terrified you make a mistake that can cost your team a goal. Um, the only time I think I ever enjoyed it was, you know, when you're, you're a couple of goals ahead and the referee's looking at his watch and you can savour that moment. But I, was, I would say that the most enjoyable part is getting into the dressing room after the game that you've won and you know you've got that satisfaction for weeks and weeks ahead all the pressure's off all of a sudden it's got to be the atmosphere for me um, the sheer build up Davey will tell you it started if the game's on a Saturday or a Sunday the build up starts on the, the Monday morning um, and just going out there and playing in front of the crowd if I'll be honest with you it's absolutely electric something that I don't think many people would have experienced before and I've said plenty of times I brought players up from England who I played with and they could not believe the atmosphere inside the stadiums. Best party afterwards, it would be the, the game I, I described, the first game, the 4-2 game. Um, it was absolute mayhem in the dressing room after the game. We won the title. We've got about seven or eight boys who had never won a title before, had just come into the team. And I remember the chairman, Desmond White, came into the dressing room there, and it's bedlam. And he managed to, to get the, the dressing room to, to be quiet. To, he managed to get silence and he said, gentlemen, he said, this is Celtic's finest hour since Lisbon. And that just meant so much to us because Lisbon obviously is the moment in the club's history. So for the chairman to say that, it, it was remarkable. 
And I'll tell you how the celebrations went on that night. The following morning, Joe Docherty, the groundsman, who used to come in and unlock the stadium, came in the following morning and the, the boardroom was, was locked, locked up and Joe opened the door, went in the boardroom and Bobby Murdoch and Jimmy Johnson were lying fast asleep in the boardroom. <laughs> Which gives, gives you an idea of the celebrations that went on that night. Um, again, I mean, I had many brilliant celebrations, title parties, but the, the Scottish Cup one comes back to me because it lasted four days. <laughs> um, I, I remained in my, my club suit from the Sunday the Cup final. I was still in my club suit on the Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. Um, but I, like, I'm a big believer when you win things, you've got to celebrate and the reason why it went on for the four days was because it was the last game of the season and we had to obviously four or five weeks break so um, I've got to be honest with you after the fourth day I was suffering for at least a couple <laughs> of weeks um, so that that was the longest party that I've been involved in Ooh. I think uh, probably my last Old Firm game uh, and I always remember it was Mark McGee's debut and we were playing at Ibrox, David Hay was the manager, and we got battered, it was just one of these games that, I don't know what happened, Rangers just battered, we were 3-0 down at half time, and it was the beginning of my illness that forced me to retire, and I had to come in at half time, so we're 3-0 down, David Hay is reading the right act as you can imagine, and I've had to put my, my hand up and say, I'm no feeling well, so he says, you're no feeling well, 3-0 down at half time and I've had to put the white flag up and that was the start of basically my health problems but I'll never forget that game for all the horrible reasons that it was significant in terms of my illness but 3-0 down to Rangers at half time that was the biggest drubbing that, that I ever took as a Celtic player Davey's actually mentioned the game the 6-2 game um, Davey commentated on it at Celtic Park um, and what made it worse was I get sent off um, and I remember going into the dressing room about 10 or 15 minutes before the end of it and, and you could hear, because you're away at the back, Dave will tell you, you're in uh, the middle of the stadium, you're behind doors or whatever, but I could still hear the, the cheers of the Celtic fans, obviously they'd scored another couple of goals after that, so that's probably the biggest doing I've been involved in and um, it hurt, that hurt, because the performance wise wasn't great, my performance wasn't great and plus I let my teammates down and the fans down me were getting sent off. I always remember my, my first Scottish Cup final was an old firm game and we had blown a nine point, uh, nine point lead in the league to lose the title to Aberdeen. So the pressure on us to win the cup was, was absolutely horrendous and I always remember Billy McNeil uh, the team talking, I can't remember his exact words, but he, he more or less said, you know, we, we've blown the league, we have, we have to win the cup for the, the punters, you know, and we got, it was a horrible game of football, but we won it 1-0, George McCluskey scored an extra time, it was a famous game for all the wrong reasons, because the both sets of fans come on the pitch, there was a pitch battle in the middle, the mounted police were on the Hamden pitch, it was crazy. But I'll always remember Billy McNeil's team talk down at Seymour Hydro the night before the game. And Billy was very eloquent, very bright, and just the way he expressed himself, he got the importance of the, the occasion, what we were going into. And again, some of us, you know, had never played in the Scottish Cup final before. And he, he conveyed it absolutely perfectly. And then he brought in Jerry Marsden. Jerry Marsden appeared from nowhere at the Seymour Hydro, sat down with a guitar and gave it a bit of You'll Never Walk Alone. So it was... Uh, it was a, a preparation that I'll never forget. See, to be honest with every single manager I played under at the old firm game, they were very short and sweet in terms of uh, the kind of let the guys who get brought up in the kind of west of Scotland and knew what it was all about. Um, and it was basically have the bragging rights let the fall, let for the fans in terms of go out and do it for yourself, obviously, and as a team, but do it for the fans there because um, they can go to their work on a Monday morning and and have the bragging rights that they've beat their closest rivals. So there was nothing really that stood out. It was very, I mean, two or three days leading up to it, there'd be set pieces you would work through. But in general terms, the team would go up and it was about the guys who knew 
me as captain, the guys who get brought up in Scotland knew what Rangers was all about. It was about us getting around about the guys and making sure that they were mentally prepared to go into battle. I think be aware of every action you take on the pitch can have a reaction in the crowd and be, try and be responsible. I, I know it's almost impossible. Barry's talking about a red card they got and it can happen. The, 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 the game is just so emotional. Don't have any regrets. Don't walk in in the, in the dressing room and think to yourself, oh, I could have done that better or this be uh, better. Go out and give it everything you've got. Um, that's what I always say to myself. That's what I would say to my my teammates and make sure you come in after the game, you can look yourself in the mirror. Um, even if you've had a defeat, you can look in the mirror and say, listen, I gave it everything I had. Best old firm goal I've seen, Henrik Larsson, 6-2 game. Um, he keeps bringing this up, doesn't he? He, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Bert Conteman made the biggest excuse for a tackle I've ever seen in my life, went with the wrong, the wrong foot. And Henrik got through on... Um, to Stefan Kloss was, yep. was in goal mm -hmm. and just played this unbelievable dink over his head and it just slipped inches in under the crossbar. It was just a, a piece of absolute genius from a really special player. Um, I've got to go with David Cooper. I think Davy will remember. I played in it. Oh, did you play in it? I right, played good. In I'm it, getting yeah. him back here. Is it a driver cup? I'm not. Yeah, driver cup. Yep, I've seen it. He flicked it over so many heads. Um, and he was a player when I was really young, growing up. I mean, he, he was a fantastic player, David Cooper. So that's probably the best goal that I've seen a Rangers player score against um, Celtic. Tell Alexa to launch Go Radio or listen on the Go Radio app.